carbon, atomic number of 6, was not created during the Big Bang 13.82 billion years ago. Instead, when the universe first began, only hydrogen, helium, lithium, and beryllium gases existed. After swirling around an infinite universe for 100 million years or so, these gases became lonely and started clumping together. As they clumped, their masses, as well as their gravitational pulls increased, clumping more and more gas together. Then, the first star, son of hydrogen and helium, was born. However, the relationship between hydrogen and helium didn't continue to be one of love for long. After a heated argument about helium's weight, hydrogen and helium began smashing violently together to make new, heavier elements. The first carbon atom was created by three helium-4s, each containing two protons and two neutrons, fusing together in this way. This is where our story begins. Let's fast forward to the present. And now carbon is the fourth most abundant element by mass in the universe following oxygen and dominated by helium and hydrogen. There are more than stars now, there are these new things called planets, and these planets have people on them. The question of who discovered carbon is really a tricky one to answer. Mankind has at least known of carbon since prehistoric times when wood was first burned black. However, if credit was to be given to a particular person, Antoine Lavoisier would probably take the cake. Lavoisier, known as the father of modern chemistry, first identified carbon as an element in his 1789 textbook titled Traité Elementaire de Chimie, published in Paris. The name carbon was derived from the Latin carbo, meaning charcoal. Carbon has been extensively researched in 1789, and we now know that there is much more to it than just burnt wood. An entire field of chemistry has been dedicated to its compounds, and for very good reason. Today, more compounds exist containing carbon than exist without. Over 10 million carbon compounds have been extensively studied, but that's only a very, very small fraction of what is possible. Carbon has some important chemical properties that allow it to be so versatile. It has an intermediate electronegativity of 2.55, which allows it to form very strong and stable covalent bonds. With its four valence electrons, carbon can create single, double, or triple bonds to either itself or other atoms such as hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. The stability of carbon and its bonds allow it to form very long chains or rings in a process called catenation. These unique chemical properties translate into some really, really cool physical ones. When carbon is just bonded to itself, it is the Michael Phelps of chemistry, winning in just about every event it competes. It has the highest thermal conductivity, electrical conductivity, melting point, sublimation point, tensile strength, and elastic modulus. It is also the strongest and the hardest natural substance in the entire world. But with these accomplishments come a few contradictions. For example, carbon is both the hardest element and one of the softest. It's the best electrical conductor and one of the worst. Now, how can these be explained? The answer lies in the chemical properties that we've already described. Carbon's ability to form strong, covalent, single, double, and triple bonds with itself. As a result, pure carbon exists in different forms or allotropes. Perhaps the most well-known allotrope is diamond, which is a result of carbon atoms singly bonded together in a tetrahedral sp3 hybridized lattice. Diamond is clear by nature, and has gained cultural popularity with its jewelry use. Due to its hardness, diamond is also popular for drilling, cutting, and minecraft. The most recently discovered carbon allotrope are fullerenes, which would induce thoughts of buckyballs and nanotubes. Fullerenes consist of sp2 carbon, meaning that each has one double bond and two single bonds, which, with slight angle strain, can organize themselves in ways to create spheres, hollow tubes, ellipsoids, and other shapes. Fullerenes may have their highest potential in the nanotech field, and popular applications are as synthetic muscles, cell therapy, superconductors, body armor, and water purifiers. The final allotrope, and my personal favorite, is graphite, which consists of planar hexagonal sheets of sp2 carbon. These sheets are then stacked and held together by van der Waal forces, and can easily be slid across one another. At first glance, though, graphite may appear to be the most humble of the allotropes, with its main use as pencil lead. But don't let it fool you because its very special properties allow it to be an integral component of many aerospace products such as rocket cones and thrust nozzles. The Grey Wonder is also a popular lubricant and protects against rust. So trust me when I say this, carbon is an insanely important and interesting element, and I'm going to continue to make more videos about it in the future. But this is the end of this one, so thank you for watching this Abridged Carbon, a brief history, properties, and allotropes. If you'd like to watch my upcoming videos, please subscribe, and in the next video, we will abridge diamond because three sentences just won't tell you its whole story, and I hope to see you then.